what the e-bike has done, um, and we're really thankful that you're getting the message out, particularly to our age group, um, that you know, we want to be sure people realize these are not motorized bikes because that's one of the misconceptions that as we run into people on the trail, that's what they think. So it's battery assist, and it doesn't help you if you're not pedaling. You can turn it on, turn it off, turn it up, turn it down, whatever. So it, it's helped to neutralize the wind, it neutralizes the surface, it neutralizes the elevation, and distance almost becomes a non-issue. Um, our cruise speed is up on the lowest setting, um, and our distance, we used to do 12 to 15 miles, now we're 25 to 30, we've done 50 mile days, and we still have battery power left. Well, one thing we realized is we were able to go um, to all the different locations. You know, he said we biked in eight different states, but we always had to kind of pick the trails that were the flattest, um, you know, not real long distances or what what we would generally do was maybe ride for 10 miles and then the bike racks were really nice because we can get them on the rack and off in a real short amount of time. So we would just ride for a while and then maybe take a break. Um, we also enjoy history, so a lot of these places you're riding in, they've got, you know, railroad deep roll museums and different things like that so we could do something in between and then go back. I mean there were days when we might ride four different segments of a trail but we always had to be careful about the terrain and the distance and also you know if it was really windy you know we probably weren't going to go very far. So those were limitations that we had that we didn't want to continue to be limited in our riding. We wanted to try some other trails um, so, Stephen um, actually got an electric bike um, from Wheel and Sprocket. It's the Stephen that works at Wheel and Sprocket, and he he had all these attachments. He had the Weehoo, and he had the the um, like the buggy type thing. And I mean, he was take pulling his kids all over the place with the electric bike, and he was riding back and forth to work all year round no matter what the condition because of how convenient and easy it was on that e-bike and so he was like well have you thought about an e-bike and so originally we thought that Scott would get an e-bike and I would just keep my bike and I'm so glad that we didn't do it that way because I would never be able to keep up with him now if I wouldn't have got an e-bike myself. I kept adding to my trike. I put fenders on it. I put, um, oh, I don't know, all kinds of things. I ended up, of course, with a motor and uh, a bigger sprocket. I don't recommend that to everybody, but uh, it worked for me. And I think that was probably one of the, one of the uh, things uh, that really um, was uh, helpful to me, realizing that uh, Wheel and Sprocket will do whatever they can to uh, customize uh, your bike or your trike for you. Uh, I find myself going uh, X number of miles and saying, gosh, I can do two more, I can do four more, and well, I wonder what's on this trail. And the curiosity and the thrill of it all. Uh, to me, it's a soul experience, and uh, almost every time I, I get on my trike. It's fun, and you know, a lot of times we ride to get something to eat, or maybe something to drink, or, um, or just to go down by the lakefront. Just, it's opening up new doors. Now. So our, our first ride. I mean, just even going to Clody, you don't realize it, but that, it, there's a hill there. <laughs> and um, I could just ride right up. And the first time I rode to the lakefront, uh, I went up the hill by the water tower and just went right up and got up to the top and was taking selfies on the top. And my husband's down at the bottom struggling. And <laughs> so, I mean, it was just, it was great. We just love to ride the bikes. I mean, and to have a destination, you know, 
it just puts you a little farther. I can ride it a little farther if I know I'm going here. Or just like the other day, we were going to Third Ward. It just, it gives you a goal, just to go a little farther. And the next time, maybe we'll go to the Harley Museum. Just, you know. And then when you get there, it just feels so good <laughs> that you made it. And it's easy to go back. Because normally you'd worry about riding home, that it's always a struggle. But now you don't have to worry that. I've always had this personal freedom on a bike that I don't have. And I also, my second love is a when I was 16 and getting my driver's license and having the freedom to drive my car. Uh, but as the car has weighed me down in responsibilities and burden of owning it, I'm back to the joy of riding a bike. It's awesome. And you're concerned for the environment. And I'm concerned about the environment, of course. Personally, myself, it allows me to enjoy every single day for what it has to offer, whether it's a rainy day, a cold day, a warm day, a sunny day. No matter what, it slows down the day a little bit, and I get to kind of take in a chance of the morning while I'm getting to work, because I have to get to work, and I have to be there at a certain time. And so it really, for me, it, it allows a little bit of a vacation every single day, whether I'm going to work or home from work. And that moment of pause sometimes is terrible. I have traffic, and I have cars, I have rude drivers. Um, but it, no matter what, I always end it thinking, oh, I'm so glad I rode my bike today. <laughs> that, was, that was fantastic. It's, it truly has changed our lives. I mean, things we do, uh, places we go, things we see. We used to avoid routes if there were hills. We would completely avoid them. And then, you know, we, now we just... What hill? We go up the hills just like, like, like we're nothing. <laughs> exactly. It's amazing. It's just amazing. Well, we found places that we probably would have never gone down the roads, um, especially down along the, the lake. Um, there's all kinds of cottages, brand new old cottages and, and new people that we met. It's amazing that we would have never, we never would have gone down there for any reason if we didn't, we didn't have our bikes. So meeting new people has oh. just, yeah, talk about this. Yeah, yeah I mean, we, we we go in in every imaginable direction. Today we'll go this way, tomorrow we'll go that way. Um, you know, there's no longer the factor of which way is the wind blowing, which way <laughs> do we stay away from. Um, are, are, do you feel up to going that far today? I mean, because... Uh, in fact, where we used to go before we had e-bikes, we had different spots where we would maybe go three, four miles and we'd stop and, you know, there'd be a, a, a bench or a table and we'd sit there for 10, 15 minutes, have a little water. Now we go right by and we don't need a stop, you know, we're <laughs> on to the next one or the next one. Yeah. So um, it, it's just, it, it's in all directions as, as far as you want to go. And like I said, we, we do find ourselves now stopping for a, for refreshment, uh, occasionally stopping for lunch. And then it went really well. Quick explanation on how to use it. And both of us laughed when we got off. You're we like, oh, you did have to pedal. <laughs> I think the other thing is I had no idea how complicated it was. Like, what did electric mean? And, you know, I have gears on one side and I have these speeds on another. Very easy to operate. But, you know, part of the discussion we had was, okay, how long do you wait? You know, yes, this is a great idea. <laughs> Looks like it's going to work. So do you wait five more years or ten more years until you don't want to ride and you wouldn't even think of getting on right. a bike? Or do you get it now? While you and, still enjoy biking. While you still enjoy biking. Yeah. 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 And I think was... just seeing, I mean, it, while we were there, at least two or three other people were in a variety of ages, male, female, you know, it was just something piqued their interest. So we ended up going downhill and I hear Mike say, oh God, we should have turned left instead of right. <laughs> Knowing we had to come back up and then there was going to be more hills. So I thought, I don't even care. Okay. I'm just, I've got my 
turbo if I needed, and uh, there was there was a big difference with Donna's electric bike. I mean, yeah. otherwise, Donna was not shy about uh, <laughs> shuttling, and this year it was like, oh, you don't want to shuttle, <laughs> you know? <laughs> says, no, it's not my turn. I'm gonna ride all day, and so uh, yeah, she certainly spent a lot more time riding, uh, and had no trouble. I, yeah. I was chasing her rather than trying to look over my shoulder for her. She was she was certainly setting the pace. And, and for me, it was a the longest I'd ridden. That was that last day. It was 44 miles. I haven't done that in 30 years. Um, so that was a huge thing. And to just get done and only be hot, and not yeah. <laughs> not so tired and cranky that. Um, I think I was know. a lot more tired and cranky than yeah. where I did last. 